Namaskaram everyone. So I am Krishna and I am the community head at Ajna Lens. Today we are here for a panel discussion. Uh, we have four members in the panel discussion. First of all, I would like to thank each one of you for agreeing to do this session and spend one hour of your time for So I will begin with introducing the members in the panel. First of all, we have Ravi Rathor. Uh, uh, we have seen uh, Ravi Rathor is the one second. Just give me a second. Ravi Rathor is the regional head at Tata Technologies, and uh, Tata Technologies is a company that we all know. Uh, they have been actively working in setting up center of excellence across states and uh, cities, so that we can promote uh, the skill development across India and prepare our students. Our youth to be job ready or industry ready, and a major role has been played by Sir Ravi Rathor. Uh, he is heading the entire development of Center of Excellence at the state of Assam, and he analyzes the need for industries bringing it under the umbrella of the Center of Excellence for upskilling the youth of our country. And we are very happy, and I thank you for attending this session. Welcome, sir. Uh, next up, we have Ajit Jambale. Uh, he is the re regional senior manager at Construction Construction Skill Development Center. Uh, he is the West State coordinator. Major contributions under his head is con conducting industrial requirements to train youths, validating the training methodologies, and certifying these bodies under Construction Skill Development Center. Leading to a prior complete life cycle of training youth via institutes as per the industry standards and finally engaging these youth with industry as skilled professionals. He has done a major role in skilling people across the construction uh, department of the nation. Thank you, sir, for attending Thank this you. session. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Rakesh Madra. He is the CEO of Akila Tech and also. CEO, sorry, CEO of Akila, and also the ex-training head at Indian Air Force. He has some notable achievements. He has served the Indian Air Force for 18 plus years, led the program of anti-jamming solutions of GNSS for fighter aircraft, and he has developed and inducted first of its kind procedural trainer for Russian airborne platform, costing 87 lakh, working closely with Indian MSME. Uh, from Chennai. He has also evaluated flight simulators of military aircraft developed by Russian Air Force uh, Moscow. And uh, we have seen some notable achievements and heading the Indian Air Force as the training head for 18 years is a big achievement. I really thank you, sir, for attending this session on a, such a short notice. We are happy to have you. Welcome. Thank you, Krishna. Okay, so it's my uh, pleasure to be part of this esteem gathering thank you sir. thank you so much finally we have pankaj raut he is the ceo and co-founder of ajna lens uh, he has uh, he serves the company as the chief executive officer he heads the training uh, marketing and the sales department and all the working and operations at ajna lens is taken care by him so thank you pankaji for attending this session namaskaram so, thank you so much we have an exciting panel here. Yes. I think we can now get started with the session. So we'll begin with the, uh, the pattern would be such that I'll be the host for the session uh, for all of you. I'll be asking questions with each one of you. And then we can have a very interactive and uh, uh, very informative session throughout this one hour of the day. So to begin with, uh, recently, we have heard a news that nearly 80% of the Indian graduates are unemployed. This is a very grave situation and this is something that demands concern and also an action. So to begin with, I would head this to uh, Ravi Rathodhi and I want to know what is your take on this uh, problem, sir? And what do you think is the major cause behind such a situation in our country today? Okay, thank you. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Uh, from Arjuna Lens. Uh, thanks Pankaj, thanks Krishna, thanks Ankar. Uh, here actually what we see uh, in our industry, 
the student are pass pass out but the skill required for the industry is not matching with this uh, what they are learning so the tata technology knows about this and what they are doing they uh, collaborate with the government like assam government karnataka government and many other states we are working the uh, same model we are collaborating with the government and we are upgrading the iti college as well as the polytechnic college so industrial requirement and the student which they are learning the uh, skills so they will match somewhere and we will get the students directly from the college to the industry so they will learn the new things in that uh, upgraded version uh, workshop we can say the workshop and technology lab nowadays we are in in ai and uh, artificial intelligence iot things uh, ev what new development skill are required for the students which is lagging nowadays so we are doing that upgradation of the college and introducing some short term as well as the long term courses so student can learn more new things and they will directly implement or they will get a good job in the industries definitely definitely skilling and lack of the skill gap is a very major issue so extending this question i would now head over to ajit ji and ask him like what has been your experiences in majorly in the department uh, how have you dealt with people who lack skills or have you ever faced any situation where we have seen a seen a skill gap yeah to extend uh, mr uh, rakot sir uh, what uh, he said uh by getting a certificate a education certificate we should actually try for skill certificate also and i will just uh, uh, everyone should hear mr kalam just give me one minute uh, i think so everybody can hear na hmm? and that introduce professional course yeah skill training skill training so when the student when the student comes out of the school that uh, high school he comes to two certificates one is that he is qualified that plus two other certificate he has got a skill set but okay who is employable certainly for college as uh, uh, graduation i am saying you ready is what you are Make it three years course. What do you give the expert course? The expert. So you will come with a degree and a diploma of expert. Okay. Ninth class, tenth class. Yeah. Uh, I think everybody has heard this. Uh, this long time back, and we are into it now. Uh, we are also giving skill certificates to the students. So this uh, bridge gap between between the academic and uh, skill has been like. through this this is so by getting this skill certificate also we can uh, reduce this what you told that 80% of the people are un- unemployed uh, some of the gap like we can give the certificates and we can fill this gap of 80% the other thing what uh, we think that there is nothing like 80% people are unemployed we think that the right people are not at the right place this is what we think in csdc so uh, we also connect uh, uh, connect this with employers and employees so that also we do in construction scale thank you okay that was great yes we have heard uh, sir abdul kalam speech and giving out skill certificate is definitely a thing but then again i have a question in this regard like when we talk about giving skill certificates how do we analyze the proficiency of a candidate in that particular skill like what is the mechanism behind that see there are there are our qualification packs what we have approved get get it approved from ncvt ncvt is a uh, 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 a framework what uh, uh, the skill uh, skill uh, certificates what they give ncvt so that packs we uh, the curriculum of that pack we uh, we analyze it and uh, the assessment is done according to that so according to that we can uh, certify that person what type of a engineer he is like what level of the engineer he is, is 
it goes from L1 to L10. So by getting out, uh, getting after, after the academic, what he completed after four years, the, he will have two certificates. That is one from the college and one for what uh, after assessment what we give. So this is what we do. Great, great. That's wonderful. So I'll now head over to Rakesh ji and ask about his experience as he has headed the entire training department at Indian Air Force. So what had been the journey through that? Like what was the training mechanism that we were using there? And how do you think can we upgrade that so that we ensure that people have the right skills? Uh, very good evening again, uh, uh, ma'am. Uh, since we are coming from self is coming from the defense uh, background and everyone will agree defense is one of the most technologically demanding sector of all the engineering discipline we have uh, second thing is that the obsolescence issue the technology which is there for 20, 50 to 20 years uh, the lifespan of uh, 20 to 30 years after uh, once the technology is inducted within 10 years the technology starts changing so with these factors there is a high demand of skill in this particular sector now when i was heading two of the programs in indian air force wherein the boeing was bringing technology in the aviation sector and they have partnered tata for production of C-130s. Uh, the Boeing chairman in one of the conference wherein I was also there, very bluntly spoke with the then RM. Uh, at that time, the Raksha Mantri was uh, 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 Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not his, his name. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Uh, Parikar, who himself was an IIT uh, graduate in the metallurgy, you know what did he tell about this country? Uh, the Boeing chairman told that I can bring the technology, I am ready to bring the technology, but this country doesn't have the wherewithal of absorbing that technology. The main reason is that there is a truly deficiency with respect to the skill and when Tata, Mr. Rattle will agree with me, when Tata did a joint venture with the Lockheed Martin for production of the C-130s at Hyderabad, you will be surprised to know they didn't hire a single engineer from India. They hired only the ITIs. You know, when we were growing up, uh, my generation was uh, growing up, we used, in the engineering, we used to have uh, ITIs. There are a lot of diploma holders. And then there were people who used to do the engineering. The diploma holders were the most skilled guys. Most skilled guys. Unfortunately, our education system, when the IT in late 80s and 90s, when the IT started coming up, you know, they're in the core engineering uh, disciplines, whether it's mechanical, electrical, electronic, they started fading away. And the IT and the software, you know, everything went to the laptop. There the skill started, the skill went only, only to the so software or the, the software part. So now with respect to your question, Indian Air Force or whether Indian Army, since it's very much dependent on the skill so our 80 percent of the manpower is taken after 10 plus 2. 10 plus 2 is the basic then they undergo for basic two years of training and then three years of diploma is given you know we don't give a engineering degree we give the diploma so the each and every soldier or the airman or the sailor is trained in that particular trade. If it's a weapon, he's trained as a weapon. If it's a mechanical, he's trained as a mechanical. In mechanical also, if it's on the aircraft, he's trained only on the uh, aircraft side. If it's a mechanical, is a transport, he's trained only on the mechanical. 
so the issue as uh, mr rathor has brought out there is a big gap between what the industry wants and what uh, is available now when i left the eco air force and then joined this company which is a startup and it's a design and development in the ew domain and uh, since last 6 to 7 months i have been under the process of hiring and let me tell you i will fact i have taken interview uh, in electronics and communication domain from the people uh, pass fresh pass out for even from the iit and when i tell them just draw a simple receiver diagram people are not able to draw and they are electronics pass out you know so so let us accept it yes the quality of the people which are passing out and what mr rathore has told very clearly they what industry wants and what uh, is available on the plate there is a you know big difference so ultimately we have hired the uh, freshers so we in our company we have a program of around about 6 months wherein we upskill them Uh, with respect to the technology and you know we have to start teaching them how to measure the earth to neutral voltage how to do the measure the resistance how to do the uh, other uh, analysis so in short yes what you are telling we are told yes uh, the people are not getting the job but the main issue if you are in a technological domain the you have to upskill and upskill when i say okay okay as mr ajit has told certificate certificate will just give you okay this is the technology a more of a theoretical part but if you go to the industry it is just not the theoretical you need to have a practical part also that is what krishna i want to add maybe i might be very straight and blunt but this is what is this exactly and uh, uh, we are also all aware of this fact that there is something very wrong and there is some issue which i would like pankaj ji to uh, put light on like when we say that 10 plus 2 students are really um, that they have that kind of skills but when we enter the education the engineering sector to be precise then something or there is some gap or something is not right that is why students who have that skills cannot actually implement that so what according to you is the primary reason behind all of this and what where are we lagging behind that we actually need to work on thank you so much krishna namaskaram everyone and thank you for being us being with us here today i think uh, ravi ji ajit ji and uh, rakesh ji have put down light on two very very critical points like ravi ji mentioned there is a huge skill gap ajit ji mentioned there is a mismatch between what the industry uh, is looking for and where the people are so that needs to be our platform or something which csdc is doing meeting the doing the match making it's very critical and rakesh ji also mentioned a key point where there is a huge skill gap but companies internally themselves are doing a lot of training where someone who comes within the industry are internally taught within the companies on what are the right skill sets which are required Uh, I agree with each one of them, and I think this is something which we ourselves at Asnalens have also faced. The key reason for which I personally think is the speed at which the traditional education or the formal education change is because there are so many procedures and policies and everything that you have to go through is not as fast as how the technology is moving. Uh, so that obviously is going to be always a skill gap. unless we have a education policy or the government which is focusing on a rapid change in the education space which has its own pros and cons as well uh, i think that is the main reason why there is a huge skill gap uh, like we at asnalens when we hire we do hire a lot of people who are coming from engineering background but one of the biggest challenges when we are within the xr space is there are not enough people who understand the xr ecosystem as well and that is when i think the ajna creator program took place within ajna lens uh, if you look at it there are more than 55000 job openings currently but not enough talent so that is something i think we all should collectively work and work towards uh, the make in india is a big uh, 
change which is happening within the nation but we require the right talent to support that uh, india don't we always consider that its biggest population is its biggest weakness how can we do rapid large scale training where the tata team uh, cscc team is rapidly doing a lot of work in so that the weakness becomes our strength india becomes probably the largest exporter of skilled workforce globally not just this will help the entire world will also bring prosperity to the nation is i think something we should work towards yes definitely so uh, based on this only uh, i would now ask ajit ji like as rakesh ji mentioned that people are skilled but after the basic education or after the formal education some they are not that skilled or they lack the basic knowledge that they must have so do you think it is the problem of not having practical exposure to methods of learning because while we are in the uh, higher secondary we are actually doing practical things but as we advance toward this thing our education system is more on the theoretical aspect and we focus more on the theory even though we have evolved a lot in terms of the methods of learning there is a gap in terms of how do we learn it practically implementing it rather than just learning it over books or through presentation so what is your take on that right absolutely ma'am uh, rakesh ji just uh, told that uh, certificate is not that that much uh, this thing not that much value is that with the certificate actually uh, if there is a, a, a electrical engineer in your house or suppose there is a uh, there is a electronic engineer is there engineer is there suppose the mcb trips so he doesn't know what to do he calls the security guy kal bulayenge chalo come up dekho bhai ko hai electric wala usko bulao dekho kya hoga so this is the this is what uh, the thing is if i will say i am a engineer i have to show my certificate that i am a engineer how good engineer i am that that is a different thing so so there were the skill a skill we have to train train people in skilling like we are what see i worked for lnt for 5 5 years when i was in charge and uh, the training used to come the training engineers used to come na so i used to uh, tell my boss sir meko koi engineer mat dena i will need a supervisor only because when the, the this engineers come to the site na they doesn't know anything so the idea here is this like in uh, second year third year we can train this engineer to be a industry ready engineers when they will join some company like lnt or chapurji so they will be like they will know every like they will know the thing practical things what uh, uh, what education doesn't uh, uh, doesn't teach so this is the idea where where, where skilling comes so, so this is the importance of skilling okay. definitely so uh, ravi ji like we have seen uh, tata is doing a lot of great work in setting up a, a lot of uh, products or uh, technology that can train them in futuristic uh, solutions uh, in terms of center of excellence so when we talk about skilling how do you think xr as a technology is helping us ac- accelerate or expedite the process of learning and also ensure that the students who are learning through this process gain that skills and not just certificate Uh, <clears throat> uh, when Ajit Ji is talking about the uh, ready engineer and thing, Tata Technology is doing one thing. Ajit Ji, I need to mention here. Uh, Tata Technology select some engineering colleges and run one program as a ready engineer. In that, uh, we have selected some forty uh, or uh, sixty people of batch from different. Uh, Uh, branches and we teach them so what the tata technology require at the level of student only they learn everything means uh, we require the katia software means we teach them the katia software we teach them the analysis means we teach them everything what we needed and this program is not only for uh, one month or two months entire one year we run this program in that they learn everything and they they already learn everything so tata technology can easily hire to them so this this kind of programs run by the tata technology and same concept we are doing for this up, upskilling in different different states
Yes, and that's a great thing. I think Ajit ji will also agree to this. Yeah, yeah. That we are all working towards upskilling. Each one of us has different methods and different means, but at the end, we are all working towards the greater cause of upskilling the people of our country. So again, I'll move to Pankaj ji, and uh, I would want you to share some uh, information on how uh, immersive learning has transformed the way we learn. Like we have collaborated with multiple companies, and we have. We have we have seen some uh, huge transformations in terms of how students are gaining those skills when they learn through xr as compared to the traditional forms of learning uh, thank you krishna i think xr plays a very very important role but we at arjuna lens do not look at xr as a end goal but we look at it, it as a tool so for someone to learn his retention and the memory creation within his mind has to be really really strong so when we learn cycle as a young kid uh, and we drive cycle let's say 40 years later we still remember how to drive cycle because our in prefrontal cortex the memories are built very very strong the right neural patterns have happened why they have happened is because when we were learning as a kid we were completely focused attentive and we are actually learning by doing we did no one of us has learned cycling by just looking at youtube videos or looking at the book right we are actually doing and we were very focused at it what xr does is it helps you build that kind of a simulation even if you look at big big uh, colleges institutions they do not have access to the right let's say someone wants to do an aerospace engineer the college does not have access to the latest aerospace technologies or the aer- latest aerospace gadgets within the organization as well how will they actually learn that is where an xr plays a huge role you wear the headset you bring in the holographic engine equipment and you actually learn by doing which is based on uh, tail scone of learning wherein you just remember 10% of what you read 20% of you what you write but more than 80 to 90% of what you actually do what we are or ar allows you is to practically do it which is something which we are doing with the tata team as well when welding and spray painting students are wearing the headset using the actual have uh, equipments and actually doing spray painting and welding so they build the right dexterity is this is the first part that is where we build the simulation bit so that involved and immersed within the experience second and important bit is the attention span now all of us are so addicted to the facebook instagrams and the reels of the world our attention span is drastically reducing somewhere i was reading that it is less than a goldfish which is less than 3 seconds <laughs> i think it's a big challenge for us as human beings as well what it literally means is when you are learning something for a couple of seconds you are there but for a couple of seconds you are somewhere outside so that in the prefrontal cortex the memories are not built so strong within we are what you do is you capture majority of your senses which is your hearing and your eyes like 70 to 80% of your cognition is just visual and audio cues so because you are within that focus we can essentially through audio visual cues make you almost meditative while you are learning so the memories that are built are very very strong so i think this is two places where in ar vr xr plays an important learn within skilling one is you learn by doing second is you make sure that you are attentive while you are learning as well yes that was a uh, really impressive and we are all i am sure we all agree to this fact that immersive learning or being a practical approach towards learning or as we call the learning by doing approach is a very good way to ensure that people learn the skills that they are doing so moving on to rakesh ji since uh, you have been in the defense sector for quite some time and defense is one of the areas that require a lot of safety and and the training is also to prepare uh, the people for unforeseen or unforeseen situations so with that respect how do you think xr will be a game changer if implemented in the training for the defense industry see xr is one of the i'll say uh, a breakthrough uh, technology in the training domain before retiring when i was heading a uh, a uh, training facility uh, which trains or uh, produces the uh, technicians engineers and the pilots for the uh, one of the major aircraft uh, at that particular time this xr uh, technology ar vr these all technology were 
setting up or they were coming into the domain and uh, Indian Defense Forces including the uh, Indian Air Force was you, uh, looking for using these tools for improving their LMS, the learning management system. Now, how does this technology help? I'll give you very practical uh, problems which uh, through which this uh, technology can help it out. You can't uh, remove, let us say a technician is there. I have to teach him removal of the engine, of the aircraft engine. Now, for last 40 years, we were only teaching the these technicians theoretical part. He has to remove these lugs. He has to connect this ground equipment. It was because I cannot, or, or the organization doesn't, cannot give them a platform for practically training the removal of the engine removal of the weapon system, removal of the refueling pod. So it was more of a theoretical. But now with XR coming in, okay, six to seven technicians or the trainees using this uh, technology, wearing the glasses, at least now they can feel it. You know, how it is supposed to be removed, which all the bolts which are supposed to be, uh, you know, open where all this link is supposed to be connected. That is one part. Second thing is that in the aircraft, or in the radar, there are so many places which are inaccessible, which the components are fitted at such an inaccessible part, which any of the technician, once in a lifetime, if that part has gone unaccessible, then only he gets, you know, uh, his, uh, uh, he's able to see he, and then he's able to open and at 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 that particular time the number of uh, man hours the problem which he is he or she is uh, facing there again this technology comes into very handy wherein the lru's or the uh, fuel pumps which are never been opened in the whole lifespan of the uh, platform or the uh, weapon system there also using this technology we can teach them we we started the Air force has already started uh, this particular uh, you know using this technology in this particular domain third thing is that for the pilots for the pilots you know for training the pilots see, everyone knows physically training uh, the pilots is uh, not only very cost heavy and it put stress on the uh, platform. The platform has been purchased not for the training. It has been purchased for uh, doing the uh, weapon part. But since you don't have the simulator, so uh, the pilot used to be trained on the uh, actual birds. So now the simulators came. The simulators are also very costly. They are also not able to give you the whole uh, uh, spectrum of the training. There again, now the AR, VR, domain it creates the whole environment and the best thing part is that one is takeoff and landing okay the simulators were able to give only takeoff and landing but what about the mission using ar and vr the whole mission can be created he wants to fly in the valley in the himalayan region or the northeastern region the hail the whole simulations uh, uh, can be created in front of him and then he can upskill it so that is what I'm telling that this AR and the VR is a boon in the training uh, domain and especially for the defense uh, ecosystem uh, because uh, we have been depending on physically going on to the platform and teaching the technician or the people. So since we have to physically depending upon the platform being uh, platform uh, going to the platform so our training quality used to be dependent upon whether the platform is available whether the platform is serviceable whether on that platform i can teach my batch is around about 60 to 70 per batch under person i cannot teach i cannot show him removal of the pump all 60 to 70. so these all three major issues are being resolved uh, by using this technology. That is my personal experience and I am 100% sure that the defense 
uh, all the three services are you know going for AR uh, for employing AR VR in the training domain. Yes, Raviji, you have something to say? Yes, uh, Arjuna Lens has given us uh, 150 stations in Karnataka. So the students were in, so from the ITA college. They are very interestedly doing that AR, VR. They are using the AR, VR technology. And uh, one more thing I need to add here. Means they, uh, the, traditionally, if they are doing the welding, they and nowadays they are doing the welding on the air vr so uh, interestingly one thing interestingly they are doing and they again they are go and searching means how we will weld how we can pa paint the material so the learning on welding and learning on the painting i i thought that they are more uh, interestedly they are doing the same thing because of this uh, new technology yes definitely and the fact that students are always looking for something interesting because theoretical learning is something that is just a one-way communication where they have no interaction and it's just a reading and passive communication but when it comes to xr they are immersed in that environment and they can interact with it in real time so that also gives them a feeling of doing it more and more because now they are getting a hype towards it. So on that lines, I would ask Pankaji to shed some light. Like when we talk about XR in terms of upskilling and be it defense, be it any other skill, be it manufacturing, be it construction or any other department, one of the major benefits uh, that I personally believe is uh, saving of resources and as well as cutting down cost. Because training of a lot of students, uh, with just let's say if you take an example of maybe an aircraft or maybe a welding machine. So if I have a batch of 100 students then I, and I have to train them, so I cannot have 100 welding machines for each one of them. All of them have to collectively learn it on a single machine and not every one of them gets that approach to first learn it hands on on that machine. And even if they get a chance of doing it once, practicing it multiple times is, a, is something that is not at all feasible and possible for the student as well as for the uh, infrastructure or the facility that we are in. So in that aspect, how XR is playing a crucial role and ensuring that everyone gets that access to the learning infrastructure and they can also practice it multiple times. Uh, I think a very nice and a valid question. Uh, when we started as Nalens, we had one vision that we want to have impact using technology and the biggest impact we saw was within the learning and development phase. Uh, so when we started visiting various ITIs, we quickly recognized that there is not enough right infrastructure. So if there are a batch of around 40 students who want to learn any skill, whether it be spray painting, welding, plumbing, or any other skills, there are only two, three, or four welding stations. So not everyone gets the right access. And that comes, that comes your question is how does ARVR provide the masses? is you can have multiple XR stations which would be on a longer run less cheaper as compared to what the materials is required for training and the cost of training as well so more and more students can practice on them because you have more equipment plus the same person can try multiple times on the same training such that because the actual paint wastage is not that actual welding material wastage is not that so if you look on a longer roadmap or a longer timeline uh, your cost of training drastically reduces because your cost of consumables drastically reduce. Uh, your training quality improves because there is an artificial intelligence which guides the student in terms of what is his skill set right now. Basis his skill sets, he is given the Rex training model. So someone who is learning slower, slowly is rewarded. Someone who is learning faster, faster he is rewarded within the journey so that he builds the right dexterity and the right uh, muscle memory. Now coming to other education such as your engineering education or your uh, school education. Within engineering education, there are a lot of concepts which are very hard to theoretically understand. That is where an AR VR gives you the capacity to wear the headset and do prototyping within the virtual space which helps you cost or save a lot, lot of time, energy and cost while also being able to learn that concept really well. 
uh, within the school education we are talking to various schools they want to teach their students on uh, topics which are very hard to traditionally teach using a blackboard or a textbook such as how does a human heart function okay you can learn through a video but it is very limited what if each student gets a hologram of a human heart in which he can himself dissect learn do various experimentations and learn right that is the world where we are moving towards which helps drastically increase the learning uh, space or the speed at which people learn yes so uh, to an extent uh, we all agree to this now another aspect of xr or immersive learning is in terms of safety we have talked about resources we have talked about the efficiency we have talked about the cost and construction is one such a department where everyone is concerned like we have seen a lot more deaths and many more accidents that happens at construction sites right so what is your take on ajit ji on this like if shift or if we are if we train our people you know if our if we train our craftsmen in with xr and prepare them for such kind of accidents and situations how will it benefit them and how can it also reduce the number of accidents that we see at a regular basis yeah ma'am uh, in construction i just uh, want to tell you this uh, there are two things first we can save the resources what you call like cement we can save like sand we can save because by in training na, there are 100 of people 100 of workers working and we have to train 100 workers so by giving them small small one one bag of cement there is huge uh, wastage is there so that is uh, like uh, uh, that is not right for the environment the first thing and second thing about safety uh, of course uh, safety actually uh, the priority is in construction uh, while doing scaffolding and everything uh, a new person is there and we are asking them to start doing scaffolding at the height at particular height he goes and he start he is frightened and is not able to uh, cope up and so what is the safety measures he doesn't know he doesn't have any practice so in, uh, in xr we are we can uh, many times he can practice like going at a height also he can practice this, this much height i can go this much only this much restriction height i can go we can also understand that this person can only go to a particular height so in safety uh, this xr is going to be a excellent thing uh, this is the this is in the construction yes so next up uh, i will move to ravi ji now uh, you have set up all these center of excellences for uh, all these students like have you witnessed any any major transformation in terms of roi of training like we have you might have seen training people through traditional methods and now since we are shifting to modern day technologies maybe not just xr but there are many other technologies that help accelerate the training process so if we talk about that how has the roi of training and development changed before uh, implementing of these technologies and after these technologies before the students the, uh, students are uh, traditionally they are teaching like uh, theoretical parts are more and after this uh, installments of new technology that uh, practicals are more so student learn more uh, than the theoretical so means they are in, uh, learning the interest uh, more interest developed in the students the more they they can go and they learn about the same things in different different ways so change is i thought uh, students are more towards the practicals and in terms of the cost and uh, training time like the training time is also one important aspect when we used to learn com- uh, the traditional methods and now as we are moving towards tech specific or tech based learning immersive kind of learning so has have you have you seen anything in terms of reduction in the time of training while increasing the efficiency of the students or are we at the same place even now there, there is a always means this technology always reduce your time means uh, uh, theoretical parts they need more time to learn now in the practical case if they are doing the own practicals then definitely the time is reduced yes 
Uh, I would also like Rakesh ji to shed some light on this aspect. Like, how will the ROI, if if I keep specific in terms of the defense sector, how will ROI? Because uh, in defense, we are doing a lot of things, and each of these simulators that you talked about earlier, or any of the equipments or aircraft, they are are there are a lot expensive, and a lot of amount of time is spent on training them theoretically, or maybe through a practical approach, which is not as effective as the current methods of learning. So, how a full if we go on a full scale deployment of XR technologies or immersive learning or VR based simulators, how will that impact the ROI of training and development in the defense sector? <coughs> See, as I covered earlier, for the defense sector, XR is one of the most sought after LMS system. When the Indian Air Force uh, uh, was exposed to you know uh, vr as well as uh, ar technology then usually how does the defense go they do the cost benefit analysis so i did one of the cost benefit analysis for our type of a uh, uh, training we are that this institute was primarily this institute was primarily training uh, the uh, aircraft technicians you know, which is a hardcore skill, uh, uh, both on the airframe, engine, electrical instrument, all the weapons. So when I did the cost benefit analysis, employing AR, VR, the cost of trading was reducing to 60%. You know, it was 60% in the cost is reduced uh, when I'm introducing this particular model as uh, including this model in my training curriculum i will not say that yes my whole physical training going to taking the technicians onto the platform gets uh, i'm going to give away that will be there because real is real feeling the real is real but yes my dependence on the actual platform has reduced a lot thereby my cost cost of training has uh, you know there is a there is a at present i will be very forthright there is a limitation at present in the technology it is very much dependent on the networking and the media you know physically there is there are there is one instructor two instructor you know they can take on they can take 50 to 60 people the technicians onto the aircraft okay they can go they can feed the aircraft they can feel the engine they can see where the uh you know uh the parts are there removal fitment putting the uh, ladders uh whatever is there here as i understand okay because afterwards i left the training establishment the instructor to uh, training ratio is limited by the bandwidth of the information being processed. So if so if, if the instructor is wearing the uh, one goggle wherein he is showing the technology, then if I understand uh, on an average only four to five uh, uh, trainees he can teach because more than that it is limited by the Wi-Fi connectivity or the bandwidth wherein the information is being shared with the you know the participants this is what I feel I'm I may not be you know this is what when I started interacting with this technology try, trying to introduce in my school this was the one uh, limitation uh, I felt that it is very much dependent on the IT infrastructure. That is one. Second thing is that defense sector per se is very, very uh, sensitive to use of uh, IT because of the security. And uh, so there, you know, the people are still, the, manager, the senior leadership are still uh, because of the security issues because it can, IT can be compromised. So that is that is one of the thing which is coming up, uh, uh, which is which is uh, I'll say I will not say detrimental, but uh, people are not not much more keen to bring 
this particular technology in the domain but yes as the more safety features in the it is uh, being included so i am 100% sure that ar vr will come long way uh, if you see the idex challenges which are coming up in all the three services any training any training uh, challenge is asking for the uh, ar vr because we, uh, we spend a lot on we spend a, our good amount of budget goes for the training yes uh, defense is definitely a vital aspect uh, and as a nation we have to take care of a lot of things when it comes to training people and in terms of safety and security as well so we have work, uh, done a lot of work with respect to training in uh, using ar vr for defense training we have also won in uh, one of the idex challenges so i would like pankaj ji to talk more about this like how we as an indian company as we follow the make in india aspect how do we ensure that anything that goes out to the defense is very kept confidential and none of the information is breached and what are the aspects that any company be it uh, in the defense or any other manufacturing company take care of when it comes to ar training because uh, even now if we have solutions made in india a lot of companies are still reliant on hardware device devices that are procured from foreign nations so what is your take and what where do we need to put a stand that okay as an indian company or as an indian firm everything should be made in india because we are all working for our nation definitely i think a very important question for the security of nation uh, we've been working with the indian army navy drdo where we've done some large scale implementations few things which we really understood really well is defense is not very interested in buying international devices whether it be from your big companies globally they are looking to buy indian made in india devices one because of the security issues right Uh, they are connected to servers globally that is where in connecting within the indian server is very important the second aspect that we have worked really well on is instead of having a uh, web server it is a local server so wherever we have done implementation we have done implementation wherein the entire infrastructure right from the processing to the computing to the display everything is within the uh, location itself which is very very critical the third aspect is the devices uh, because they are completely made in india we make sure that uh, there could be no microprocessor or chipsets that leak out information which are critical for the defense or even organizations it is not just the defense even large enterprises are very uh, do want to keep their secure information within their uh, location itself so that is where having the right chipsets within your device is very critical then we come to the so- software aspect uh we always make sure that there is nothing which is leaking information from the software aspect so there is a algorithm and there is a uh, tech team that sits on the back end which essentially checks what are the internet uh, protocol accesses that are happening as a part of the software deployment what are the things which might leak information from the software we really make sure so anything that is put on to the platform which is asna vidya platform is made sure that it is not sending any irrelevant data or even sending any data outside the location which is required right so these are some of the things that we have really taken care from the back end side on the asna vidya platform whether it be the hardware platform so that data stays within the institute or within the organization where it is deployed at. so one final question i'll have the same question for all four of us uh, where do india stand in terms of xr technology we have seen tech revolutions happening through uh, from decades it was the world wide web be it the blockchain be it the ai and if there has been like every tech is identified by one country but as of now xr is one space that is everywhere right so where do we stand and how can we capitalize this opportunity so that we can bring a massive transformation that we are yet to see here again i will start with pankaj ji and then move on to others <laughs> i think uh, we as a nation have missed the ai race wherein china and us is rapidly taking that over uh, the next a fundamental technology that is essentially going to transform the human life is xr which essentially is the future of computing 
we we need to have more and more creators within india who build and work on this technology uh, one thing we are doing for the same is the ajna creator program we need to have more and more startups we need to have more and more innovators within india who understand the technology and start building them so having events and uh, uh, conferences like this is very very critical so that more and more awareness is brought up within the people in terms of so many useful implementations within the ar vr space so if you go uh, and ask each one on this call they would see that ar and vr has many many practical implementations where the roi is clear but someone who might probably not attend a call like this might think ar and vr is just for the gaming use cases but it is far beyond so bringing that awareness about the xr industry that the impact is not just gaming use cases but actually fundamental on ground use cases will help build this ecosystem even further yes definitely uh, i would now ask ravi ji to shed some light on the same question like what is your take on and where does india stand in terms of these digital revolutions you know it's uh, required very much because uh, these are the new technologies much of the students doesn't know about this so as pankaj ji says uh, it's uh, if we de- defend uh, china and uh, america so we need uh, to aware uh, set much more sessions like that so students as well as the, their parents also knows about this and they will uh, use they will use this uh, opportunity to learn from ajna lens or uh as you said the ajna vidya platform uh from our uh, our institute which the data technology also upgrade so the people can come and they can learn from that uh, from that institute also yes moving to ajit ji yeah uh actually i have seen different different uh, different state showing different uh, different things actually I, I visited some G20 meets. I visited uh, events in G20. In Bangalore, if you go to VR and AR, like every stall I was seeing, AR, VR, this was there. If you go to extreme north, my my one of the colleague is there. So in Assam and every uh, that uh, seven sisters, the, that state, they like AR, VR is very new for them. And uh, some colleges I have attended, some big colleges like uh, in construction management colleges. so they are like they are going ahead of this we are like uh, 3d walls are there some different kind of technologies there they have just started just a start is there in construction skill we have uh, we have uh, started we are we are we are learning and uh, teaching also we have started now training also we have started in uh, ar vr assessment is balanced we are not started as assessment in ar vr but uh, definitely training we have started in ar vr because this has to be done uh, this is the future of uh, construction also that's thank you yes definitely ar vr is the future and if we have to like we need to work fast grow fast so that we can uh, accelerate the adoption all across the nations so that we all can stand to benefit from it our final uh, thing from rakesh ji your view or your take on where does india stand and is there anything that we need to do let's write the process of adopting this tech in our day to day operations i will say we are still at nascent stage the country what we are and uh, we are still at the beginning there are a lot of lot of things a lot of there are so many industries we have not even touched the ar vr you know? so it has a great potential uh, introducing in the learning management uh, system and iterative training also the ar my only one thing is there which i have seen with what all the technology which have come in this particular country as a indians we don't innovate it you know today okay there's a boom on the ar vr so everyone is going for ar vr vr we need to understand this technology is heavily dependent on the it so all the enterprises who are on the back end of the you know ar uh, vr they need to innovate innovate in terms of the the type of uh, uh, the glasses you know the whole scene which is being created 
the the training material how it is how realistic see ar vr will remain if the more it is made realistic the customer will always come they are going to come if, if it is made made realistic number 1 number 2 the less is made complicated simpler so the any of the industry will be dependent on it any of the industry will be uh coming for it so what i say is that yes it has a great future in this country there is a high demand okay and whether it is a defense or it's a construction or it's a heavy engineering or it's a, uh, everywhere you know this technology uh, brings a lot of uh, facilities in the lms so this is what i would like to say totally agree with that uh, on this point because we have seen a lot of digital innovations but the problem that we think it is or personally is that we have been always consuming that kind of technologies as you mentioned that we are not having innovators or rather we can say we don't have enough creators for ages we have stuck to that notion that mm-hmm. if there is any technology be it facebook be it whatsapp be it any other thing that we use today we are just consuming content so tech that has been already created from the west but now we have we need to change this notion and we need to shift from this and like take charge take and become many more creators rather than than just staying consumers as and when we sh- bring that shift as and when we start innovating start creating many more thing in this space be it hardware be it software be it the system integrators we will definitely have an edge not just a competitive edge but a leading edge so that you know, we just not transform our nation but also we grow and we also contribute to the common notion of making india a trillion dollar economy i am sure you all would agree to that uh, yes. on this point yes yes aviji so we have just one question in our chat box we will take that and we'll stick to our time and then we'll close this session so krishna vee singh is asking apart from lnd i heard telecos are adapting metaverse and in supply chain as well so could you please highlight few of the use cases you have seen in any of these sectors so like do we see any implications of xr in supply chain or telecom sector ankaj ji yeah i can answer on the supply chain aspect so we are already working with one of the largest supply chain companies here uh, wherein uh one of the biggest challenge for them is supply chain management and the retention within the company as well when someone joins a supply chain company he has to be trained on the entire factory layout how the supply chain works out and how what are the activities that he has to do on a daily basis to teach that itself requires a lot of time energy and effort what they are implementing this is within the learning and development phase wherein they are teaching the people on how to carry out the daily activities but also how the entire supply chain at that factory works out that's within the vr space within the augmented reality space when they wear the headset when a new supply order comes in for some uh, some part to be picked up they just click on to the right ui ux and they are targeted at the right place within the factory to pick it up and place as well so that is also done third aspect they are doing is the uh, analysis of the parts that are moving through the supply chain right if there are any defects if the packing is not done correctly because there are cameras on to the device you just look at it where if there is a defect the camera detects and gives you a heads up so you can pick that uh, part from the conveyor belt and then replace it so things like this are been done within the supply chain that's a great application of xr and i believe that xr is not just limited to one industry or one sector it is applicable to all the domains it just that we as rakesh ji mentioned we need many more innovators so the use case could be anything it just that we need to in the notion from being consumers to creators uh we are short on time so i'll just take this last question from vivek chan how do you see the impact of ai in the xr space mainly in developing a product and jobs related to designers or developers so ai is a, a very important thing or one technology that has caught a lot of hype in the last few years a lot of hype in the last few years 
So I would ask Ajit ji to share some notion on this. Uh, how do we see AI integration with the XR space? This is difficult one. This is so AI with XR. <laughs> really sorry. I think so. Pankaj can answer this. Yeah, I'll try my best. So AI, I think, is drastically changing on a daily basis. Uh, it is working on the content creation aspect, helping you build really high quality content with minimal uh, prompts. So you put in the right prompt so that you can create content, whether it be audio content, video content, 3D models or the environments. You just type in the right prompts and it starts creating content. And on Arsenal Lens, we are work, uh, working on the back end to develop that technology. So the content creation is drastically changing on that aspect. On the job side within the XR space, uh, there is a change in the job requirement for people who require understand the AI aspects and how AI works within the XR space. Uh, they are given more preference as per, compared to someone who does not know it as well. Definitely. Uh, and AI is an important role. Like I think uh, we have been missed humans have brains as the most powerful creation and these technologies as such ai is one tool that helps us expedite our process and make our creation better than that better than what we are at so yes XR, ai in xr will definitely be a great thing and we'll have many more implications to see in the future uh, we will now end this session i would like to again thank all of you for coming and attending this session and sharing your valuable insights it was very good interacting with each one of you and getting so much information which all of us uh, have might not be aware of and even our students who are part of our Ajna Creator program have learned a lot about this industry and also how can how does the future look like so thank you so much namaskaram thank you thank you thank you everyone namaskaram thank you everyone thank you everyone Thank you everyone.